everyone and welcome to another fabulous episode here with myself and our wonderful guest today bringing you lots of information on our topic search engine optimization and how it's much more than putting keywords into your title so we've got quite a few questions we do need to nitpick his brain so welcome Ronan Walsh thanks Anya uh, great to be here and uh, looking forward to talking all about SEO <laughs> wonderful wonderful some people might actually look at seo and think oh my gosh that's a bit dry and boring uh yet it's such a very very uh powerful thing for all of us these days we're all having to have a lot more of an identity uh on online and do business online and things like that so you'll have to tell us all about it but first off how about just giving us a little bit about your story yeah, so I had an interesting road to where I am today. Um, I would have started off uh, giving you, a, I'll give you a quick uh, synopsis of my, uh, how, how I kind of started off or how I kind of fell into digital trawler would be kind of the, the way our digital marketing and um, how, how I actually fell into this industry was I started off in the outdoor industry. So I started off as a surf and kayak instructor and uh, went backpacking around india and doing a little bit of work here and there and basically i made some contacts over there working in um kind of the the clothing industry kind of hippie alternative wear and i brought them back to ireland and i started selling them over here so i at one stage i had three market stalls throughout ireland i was kind of going in between them driving like with a little volkswagen golf packed full like I was literally there's a photo of me somewhere where I'm, I'm like this and there's just jumpers all around me um, but uh yeah so from there I I realized that you know I I have to get out of this I can't like this Volkswagen Golf isn't going to last forever um, it's uh you know I, I I I can't see myself being 30 or 40 driving around the country and and um, getting up at 3 or 4 a.m to try and move my stock to the other side of the country and it just it, I, I was looking for ways out of it so I thought that online was going to be the way and it it opened like it's 10 years later and I'm still kind of on that journey in the, in the online scene but what I learned from that experience was I built my own e-commerce website and um, I started marketing it myself and there was a local agency I reached out to and was kind of asking them about pricing or how would I get more people to it or start selling online. And they started giving me some tips. So the owner took kind of a personal interest in me and he started showing me some of the tricks of the, of the trade. And really from there, it kind of started snowballing. So that, uh, that agency owner took me on to do a little bit of part-time work. And the more work I was getting from him, the more I realized that actually my business model wasn't actually going to work. So I had taken my kind of clothing or import business from India. I'd taken that really as far as I could. And it was never going to be more than a market stall. It was the margins were too tight in order to actually mm. either put the time into creating content to get people to your website or else it was too tight to get um, kind of paid ads working. So from there, it's it snowballed, doing a little bit of um work for the agency that agency got bought out and uh, I started off freelancing and it basically has grown and grown and grown and now we're a five-man company uh, based here in Ireland but we've uh, employees all over the world so yeah that's amazing it's such a lovely lovely story and we do know that we often come across people that like that that it's just these um it's almost like these chances that tend to add up and where you think you are or where you've started to where you end up is really quite different and as you heard listeners that uh, Ronan is in Ireland beautiful lovely Irish accent there uh, which is really lovely it's really cool and and you've heard also that yes he's been doing it for a good 10 years now and he's also a lecturer in web design digital marketing as well so you've really come quite a long way with your uh with your uh, certainly from the the combi van or and and selling the um the products online yet there's also a lot of people that are getting into things like shopify it, it really does depend on what your profit margins are i think that um something that what you're doing now is certainly 
a growing, a growing industry and you probably end up getting people saying, I mean, I know that you do do web design and people saying, can you just do this or can you just do that? But the importance, because I've, I've dabbled in it myself, as you well know, um, the importance of SEO. Can you, can you give us a bit of a deep dive about why is it so important? What, what is with it all rather than just the, the keywords? Tell us how fabulous you really are and what you do do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, when I started off, right? So when I started off with that agency um, who's kind of introducing me, I would have been at a very low rank helping them with like keyword placement on pages and fixing titles and descriptions, which is what you get in the back of WordPress when you're doing Yoast, you know, you have that traffic light system that tells you if you've mentioned the, the keyword enough times. And that is, that's a very, very small part of SEO. So, and um, I was going to say it's, it's grown, but it hasn't really, it's always been, uh, it's always been about like marketing in general. And I think I, I was saying to you, like SEO encompasses, encompasses social media, PR, like your web design from a technical perspective, from a user interface perspective and usability perspective, and then from a content marketing perspective. And like the content marketing is only, you know, one fifth of that. And it's uh, the key replacement is only a very tiny fraction of it. You know, it's just enough to let the search engine know that you're, this is what your page is about. And it's kind of like your ticket to the races. So like, your page title, your pay, um, your keywords on your page are basically saying, this is the race I want to be in. And, and after that, then it, it, it comes down to getting out the right stories and being featured in like, you know, if you're a local business, being featured in your local news and getting something called a backlink. So it's like when another website links back to your website, that's like a vote of confidence. So it's basically telling Google, um, I as the external website or the, the local newspaper, whatever it is, like validate that this business is legitimate and I support it and here's a link back to it. And those sort of signals give Google um, a trust kind of authority um, figure. So it used to be called PageRank. Google have come out and said that they don't use this anymore. Mm. Um, but it's, there's still something similar there that they haven't actually labeled or named that there is kind of an authority. So uh, a lot of people would uh, refer to it as domain authority these days, which okay. it basically encompasses like all of that. So like your PR, your user interface, um, your site speed and technical and how much it can, it can be trusted. And there, there are loads of factors. So like back in, back 10 years ago, when I started, Google said that there was 200. I actually solely believe that nobody in the world knows how many factors Google actually has because there's so many different variations of it and it's all built on AI now. So I'd imagine that like Google is building these new algorithm factors and there's no engineer in Google who knows what they all are because the platform is actually building them themselves. That's, that's my own personal theory, but I, I would I personally, I, I think that that's the way it is. Like there's so many different elements that you can count as a ranking factor. And there's so many blurry lines between what's a ranking factor and what's correlated. So like, for instance, people say that like bounce rate is a factor, but in fact, that's actually not the measured factor. It, it's something to do with what's called dwell time. So when somebody goes from your site, um, from Google's results page to your site, and then if they go back to Google's results page, well, then Google knows that, you know, they didn't actually spend a whole lot of time on your site. But a bounce rate, if you don't have it configured correctly, um, you might have 0% bounce rate, which means it's really engaging, but that would give Google the wrong signal. So like Google really relies on factual data. Um, so there's, there's loads of kind of blurry lines there as to what works and what doesn't work. But if you can focus on those five areas that I said and you keep investing in them like that, um, and to be honest, that's like digital marketing in general. So like I often look at SEO, it's, I think people think that it's keyword placement and fixing mm. your title and, and your paragraphs on your site, but it's actually looking at, you know, content marketing, PR, social media, um, the, and the technical side of your website. So yeah, there's, there's loads to it. Well, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking I've got these two websites. I started off with one and then I started to develop another one thinking I was going to move everything over, started to. Then I'm like, no, 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 I actually need to go back to the original plan, move everything back. And so that it's halfway between and there's just so much stuff stuff in there that I've done and so many pages I'm I'm sort of look at it all and go oh my gosh you know um one I think I need a heck of a lot more help with it but two that surely this is helping and assisting with SEO I mean yes I've got Yoast um I, I really didn't have enough time to play around with the Google Analytics uh and yes there's a heck of a lot of backlinks um but, you know, there's other sorts of things that articles that I come across and I think, oh gosh, well, I'm not doing that and I'm not doing that. And I'm, I'm not a blogger. So when you're saying content marketing in this day and age, there's so many people calling content just pretty much everything and anything and that it equates to being, you know, a good 80% of your, what we are told for our, um, our work on our websites. And you're saying it's just such a small amount. Oh my gosh. So what yeah. else do we have to do? <laughs> yeah. So, and like, the, like, it's interesting that you say about content marketing, because that's a really vague, um, mm, very vague. And apologies to the listeners. The re the, it's, it's the reason I, I left that kind of vague and I'll go into it now in a minute, but, um, it's it's that there's so much in it it's if i started going into it in depth like we could be here for the next two or three hours and <laughs> um it, it would get really boring <laughs> but um so i'll give you a, a quick example so like with content marketing and um, there for me there's kind of three different pillars within there right so there's like your seo content marketing there's social media content marketing and then there's brand awareness content marketing so like your brand awareness is your awards your news uh, new employees that are coming on um, promotional material, things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's your social media, which are like short to the point blogs. So somebody's scrolling through social media, they go, Oh, that's interesting. They click on the link. They want the information there and then, mm -hmm. and then there's like long form SEO content, which is maybe one and a half thousand, 2000 words plus. And I'm not saying that there's an exact figure on word, on word count there. It's just that you have to cover a, co a topic really in depth that you know, you're, you're the best, the ultimate kind of resource for people to find information on that particular topic. So mm. you, you need to cover it really in depth. Like you'll see a lot of the SEO blogs, if you go onto them, they'll have like little anchors at the top that'll bring you to the section that you want because the article is so long that you actually need a contents um, section, table of contents at the start. So there are different, and then like there, there's other types of content then as well, such as, you know, like conversion rate co content where you're, um, you might have maybe a, a calculator or something like that to try and help somebody get them over the lines. So like, you know, you can break down content into even more than those three pillars. But when we're talking to somebody about what sort of content they need, it generally falls into those three pillars. Um, and, uh, you know, you do have to be aware that SEO isn't the only reason you do content marketing. But mm. if you're, if you're looking at trying to increase your SEO, you would probably look at doing long form content on a blog and the idea isn't, and this is where people get kind of um, caught up in it, right? So they're kind of like, well, a blog is going to bring somebody to my site, but they're not going to want to purchase my uh, whatever it is, software or product. And mm. you have to be very aware of that. So there's something called the marketing funnel. Um, I'm sure some of your listeners will have heard of it already, yeah. but basically a blog is the awareness stage at the very top of that funnel and you want to get thousands of people in yeah. and you want them to take an action on the site but the goal won't be to actually convert them because it's an awareness kind of investigation exploring sort of stage so if you can provide them with really useful information and maybe get them to either follow you on social media or sign up to an, uh, an email list or kind of a sequence of some sort like that becomes then a connection and you can start working them down that funnel. So you're looking at maybe a 3% conversion rate into an email list and then you're building the email list and the email list is where the conversion actually takes place that somebody either contacts you as a lead or else they, they you know, you send them kind of like, we've got a deal on this product this week and they go, okay, I'll buy it now. Um, but they aren't going to come to a blog and go into your shop and then 
make a purchase you know that that doesn't happen that's mm. that's not in our nature we have to buy into a brand and and um, build trust with it before we actually buy from them so uh, it is I think particularly from for SMEs, it's kind of hard to see that bigger picture, but that is the idea of blogging that you're kind of getting them in at the top and then working them through the funnel. Mm. And when you say SMEs, you're referring to subject matter experts or small, small, uh, medium enterprises, small, Sorry. medium enterprises. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so because <laughs> of uh, the various different sort of places where I've uh, um, taught and worked, it's, it can mean the two different things. And, and I'm thinking um, recently someone asked me to have a look at their website. I'm like, I don't know why people ask me this. I'm not an expert in this. And I, I can, as far as the aesthetics are concerned and have a, a design eye for things, but there is, we, gosh, you know, the there's so many websites that's like a piece of string, you know, there's so many different styles out there and things that you can do with them. And this particular person had their website set up more as that old fashioned sort of looking blog style. And I know that there's been people that say, no, no, that's really good for SEO compared to when you look at say ones that are very, very artistic and they're, and in the first fold, it's just a picture or it's just a video or that it could be that that is the page and you've got to go click into that to get to other pages. What, what do you think is, <laughs> I know this is like, yeah, so, that and like that's, that's what I was saying. At the, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what I was saying at the start. Um, kind of like you know it, it like it depends right it's the the most commonly used phrase for an it consultant um, and it, it really does it depends on the industry you're in who you're trying to rank against and um like how well you're performing now and what's at risk and things like that um so with those kind of old html blocky sites okay. uh, that have the two sidebars down the middle and there's like a big block of generally beige content or something in the middle um, I, I would say it's really good to have content, I think, above the fold. And what I mean by above the fold is like the screen that you land on. And that's kind of prominent when you land on the page, the top bit of your website that comes up, that's mm -hmm. readable to a user straight away. So if you have content in there, it's going to benefit you. Um, but if you look at other websites that you're trying to compete against, because I always say it's kind of like, you know, like if they're, if you and me are in the woods and the bear is chasing us, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. And yeah. it's very similar with Google. Like if you look at the top people who are ranking, you don't have to tick all of Google's boxes. You have to tick more than the person who's ranking number one at the minute. And that's, that's the key. So if you look at your competitors, you're trying to rank against, and you maybe do a quick audit on their website as to what content they have, how can you do it better? Do they have content above the fold? Well, that's what it's all going to come down to mm. um, and page speed and things like that makes a big difference. So a lot of these new sites that are coming up with these like nice banners on the top and things like that, they're WordPress templates that um, they're, they're kind of auto generated. There's a lot of kind of script involved because not only do they have to load the resource to put that lovely screen in front of you, but they have a hundred other functions that also mm. have to load in kind of the background and there's loads of different files and structures and it's confusing for google those old html sites are basically a file and uh or it's a folder and then in that folder there's all of these pages that are in html which are the same as just loading a microsoft word document and yeah. google loves that because it's so easy and i kind of quick for user experience you know it just loads in seconds because it's yeah. so small but there's, there's no function and the usability might be quite small. So yeah. um, it's uh, like, it is, it is tough to know. It, it would have to be case dependent. Um, but I'd say start looking at your competitors and seeing, okay, right. Like, you know, am I going to actually have to change it because my competitor is doing better? And the other thing you have to remember as well is, is that, you know, you can get all of the people to the website that you want, but if they aren't converting or turning into leads, well then like that, traffic is pretty much useless to everybody so if your mm -hmm. site isn't user friendly you know, or if somebody can't trust it if they go god these people haven't updated their website for 15 years like i'm not going to do business with them like you have to take that into consideration as well so maybe if you lost two or three positions but your conversion rate went up 
then you know it might it might actually pay off because that's the end goal. The end goal isn't always to rank number one on Google, um, unless maybe you're you're an SEO expert just to kind of hold a hold something on, on the other um, local SEO SEO firms. But uh, other than that, I don't think there's any business who actually really covets the number one position. It's it's all about getting leads and more business and trying to help users your your clients at the end of the day. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a lot in that. There is really. And and I've seen some sites, they look user friendly, they look aesthetically pleasing, but they've also got that um that lead capture thing on above the fold as well. So it's like the 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 two columns sort of thing. And then the second column is uh, you know, filling in um uh, you know, you uh, an email list, subscribe to this, you'll get this sort of for free. And and I know that it's um, it's it's not, you know, it's been around for a while. And I know that a lot of people recently have been sort of saying, oh, I don't like that anymore. But again, I know a lot of them, they still have high conversion rates. So yeah, the conversion rate is still the 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 end goal, isn't it? Yeah, no, that that's it. And like we we even have it on our site. Like we have a, a case study straight away. Um, we know people aren't going to want to contact us and talk to us straight away. So we kind of have a case study. Everybody's coming to our site to learn a little bit more about digital trawler and what we can do. So mm -hmm. we hit them with a case study straight away of excellent work that we've done previously, and that makes that kind of builds trust. So somebody's able to, uh, somebody's able to come in, see what we've done for somebody else, and then we also know straight away who who that person is and um, so we're able to maybe reach out and say look if there's anything we can help you with like not looking for a call or anything like that but just you know just to let you know we're here kind of like a shop assistant uh when you're shopping for clothes or something like that you want to be able to go up to somebody and go we're here if you need us but other than that you can just ignore us for the time being mm -hmm. So, I'm just looking yeah. at your your site here on my other screen. Yes, you do. And I suppose it's good that you do have it's a case study rather than ah, subscribe to our list and we'll give you a PD. Like it, it's a it's a video. We I love video because it's very engaging. You don't really have you have the ask, but it's not a pop-up bot either, because there's a lot of arguments around that as well. And as to where whether that automation really is helping with your your SEO optimization. What's your take on that? Yeah, so I think um, like bots were designed for support and customer service to help you kind of solve issues 24-7. You'd be able to go to the bot. And anytime I'm on them, I just type in support, support <laughs> until I get a, a human myself. But um, they've been they've been helpful a, a few times. But like the one that pops up there, um, we it, it, it connects directly with my own phone. So like if you type in there, you'll you'll get me on my phone and um and i'll be talking to you i also pop up on my on my desktop here if i'm at the desk and i'll be able to talk to you directly um through through there you know so it's actually like you need particularly in in our game it's like very bespoke yeah. to the user so yeah. i think that that is it it's and again, you know, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you're yeah. kind of service-based or customer-based, yeah. uh, you might need something like that. Like if you have a large e-commerce store, it might be good. But I'd always give people an option to contact with support because it's frustrating if you have an issue and you can't get in touch with somebody or talk to somebody about your problem. Mm -hmm. Another question I wanted to ask you again, I'm thinking of this particular person that I um, sort of gave them some feedback and I know about, you know, the algorithms and I'm, and, and I'm, I'm not, you know, much across the SEO sort of thing. So um, I know that it, you're supposed to, and you're saying to check on your competitors. So check on your, not only the competitors that you know, but check on those that have a good ranking in what you're checking on for keywords but i know that you need to go in and check in your incognito mode so does that is that across the board as far as it clearing the slate with any of the particular uh, i don't know if the right terminology is algorithms or not but for what your seo and your your computer program is compared to someone else's yeah, so like we have software there that that checks rankings um, and it'll tell us the position as best it can, right? But the thing is, is that it's not really a true view because if like everybody's um, results change. So like you're in Australia, I'm in Ireland, they're going to be completely different. 
Um, but even here, like if I search for something on, on Google and my partner searches for something on Google, it, we will get completely different results. So they're constantly changing and you need to take that into consideration. So while incognito does, you know, it, it, it doesn't have any cookies um, per se that it's not following you. You know, if you log into a, an account or something like that, you're not going to get a really true view. So incognito, it does get rid of a lot of your personal information that could skew it. And it does give you a more realistic view. But I'd say you search console is, is the, the best area to keep your, to track your rankings because that's taking into consideration everybody's personal data and as to how your your site has um, has actually been displayed over the past few weeks or months or whatever sort of view you're looking at. So you can't really rely on that data alone. But like for us, we'd we'd Google um, we'd Google for our own results, maybe in incognito. We might do it on on our own um, search results just to see. Unless if we knew we were um, like let's say for instance I was telling you there we're, we're hopefully going to buy a house I'm looking up like a load of different bathroom fixings and things like that so if we yeah. had a client come on I'd be quite conscious that my browser is going to show me up a lot of the websites that I've been on over the past week so I would definitely use an incognito window then and um, to kind of find those competitors but for my own results I'd, I'd use search console to make sure that my rankings aren't fluctuating like crazy on different days or um that they're continuously increasing uh because a lot of those programs only give you a little snippet view and google knows it's a bot that's going through these like you know it's mm -hmm. it's basically hitting all of these keywords all day every day and it's you know going back to 10 pages each time so um google doesn't particularly like those and it goes against their guidelines to be using the search results through computers um kind of generated and things like that so they're not they're not ideal and um, it's very hard for Google to completely get away from them and um, you know I'm sure that they have different sort of bots and algorithms themselves to to try and stop them but uh, really I'd, I'd say use search console really to summarize that to get true results. Okay. That's interesting that's interesting yeah. um, and I know there was also uh, uh, when I was doing this whole sort of changing around with um, my uh, websites and then also the servers compared to the the hostings uh and i was following some <laughs> i was a bit naughty i was following some of those tutorials on youtube <laughs> oh my lord he talking about taking down a rabbit hole holes a lot of rabbit warrens there but um i found that there was a bit of a common denominator there with um three particular i can't think of them off the top of my head that um these particular sites that you use and you check on your speeds um and one of them did quite a bit of in-depth giving you um statistical data also on seo and stuff like that and i remember then trying to talk to my web developer at the time and he's like no don't focus on that focus on this but i'm going yes but this has got a lot of red dots <laughs> Whereas what you're focusing on is green how do i know that you're just focusing on the easy stuff and not the red dot stuff what would be your suggestion to people who do that? <laughs> um, so is there, is there a loud noise in the background? Is there? Oh, there, it just started. Yes. Apologies. I just give them two minutes. There's construction going on next door. Um, we could give this a quick pause if you like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think there's Sounds like that paused. They possibly stopped. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so <laughs> that's your question there now. Do you want to ask it again? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Are you fine with the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So it's it's uh, it, it depends on what the, exactly the issue is. But sometimes, like your web developer might be right there. So it might be that, like you know, it's saying images are loading very slowly. Mm -hmm. But it might be, it mightn't be that the images aren't compressed or small enough. It might be something to do with like your server isn't configured correctly in order to load, load them properly. And um, so it might be something like that. So like we'd always say follow the, the web developers and um, guidelines on them, but there are, there are multiple sites. So there's um, uh, like there's page speed insights and I'll send you over the URLs afterwards, GT metrics, mm -hmm. there's um, Pingdom, I think, is another one. Yep. And then um, 
there's the inspect element on Chrome as well will allow you to see um, how your site is flown and it gives you something called a waterfall chart. So, and yeah. that's probably what you're talking about there. That's where all the red dots that's come right, up when right. you're going. It was the What's first three you said, here? tick, 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 that's right. Oh yeah, and then waterfall, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, and uh, yeah, so it'll show it'll show you, and um, like there's always going to be a little bit of a delay between you know connecting with a site through your browser and then the hosting returning that site, generally mm -hmm. about one second or so, mm -hmm. and then from there down, you know, you you don't really want after the site's connected, you don't really want to be waiting on your server too much. So if your server is waiting, you might think maybe about switching hosting or talking to your your developer, if you can try and optimize it in some way. But PageSpeed is a very small element, so it's gotten a lot of publicity. I think um, Google did a big PR campaign around it. Yes. And the reason for that was that I think they reduced the size of the internet by about a half through their kind of optimization <laughs> and coming out and saying that it's one of their ranking factors. Was that the objective? <laughs> because it's like but what they've done, is that they've actually reduced the amount of time that they have to crawl. So now the bot's able to do twice as many websites in the same amount of time, which saves them a fortune on hosting and database centers or data center fees. So like it, it was genius. Um, yeah. I think that's brilliant, of course, because there's all these trends all the time. Because again, I've seen this whole SEO thing come back and I'm like, Hold on, is this old news or and, and, and of course it's another trend, isn't it? But yeah. ultimately you're suggesting to us that the whole SEO thing is a whole lot more important for our websites than what we ever really realize. Yeah, because it's like it started off with like back in the day, because not many people had those boxes ticked. And um, like I was saying, you know, used to used to be faster than the guy who's number one. And nowadays people are ticking all of those boxes. They're ticking the PR, they're ticking the content, they're ticking the social media. And um, so SEO has kind of developed from on page where you're filling in keywords into your paragraphs to becoming like the overarching like digital marketing strategy and how it all ties in together. Mm, mm, mm. And probably really ultimately, if this is not your gig listeners, then just go and get a professional to do it. I mean, I like to do these deep dives because I like to know what it is that I get involved with um, because I'm a bit of a why person. But I tell you what, I have wasted a lot of time on these sorts of things <laughs> compared to, you know, perhaps working on some of them, the other parts of the funnel of my business. Um and I, and I must admit, though, what it has made me very, very aware of is other people's, unfortunately, their websites performing very poorly, even to the point that um, my son does uh, social media marketing with Facebook and particularly Facebook ads. But even he says to me a lot of the times with the groups that I'm involved with, he says, mum, they don't even have their... Um, Oh, what is it uh, that 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 uh, the link up to the Facebook? What's it called? Um, from like linking to accounts, is it? Yes, with the there there to um, with the people that are going through their website. Oh, now I'm having a complete blank as to what it's called. Oh, um, Google Analytics, the code they don't have. Yeah, the but for, for Facebook specifically, so for to oh the pixel. Then, sorry, the pixels. The oh, pixels. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many people don't have that let alone the google Ad analytics and um yeah. and working that out so as far as um entrepreneurs are concerned how important do you think that their search engine i mean it sounds like it's going to be a nadir question but i do have to ask it how important is it really for an entrepreneur well i think like it's kind of like asking how important is marketing? Um, like it fits in with every business, like every business can can use that kind of blog, that content marketing um, element that's, you know, top of the funnel coming in, building up a um, an email list. Every business can use PR where they're getting out and talk, getting publicity through either local newspapers, national, or maybe their specific industry. Um, like, you know, Facebook, I, I think has 2 billion users, like, you know, your audience has to be on there. So it like when it encompasses all of those things, it like, it's a hundred percent, as you said, you know, it's, it's a no brainer really for people that like, they have to be doing it in some way. 
while the technical element and uh, fair enough on page is important it's kind of like the foundation but um you know that's only the start that only gets you to the race like i was saying at the start and um, so it is it is really important and to not just stop at optimizing your on page website it like once you've that done you need to start moving on and looking at your pr strategy Mm, love it love it love it and really uh, with a lot of things that I say to people that I've been coaching if you're already doing something and most of the times we're already doing these things it's just about doing it better just leveraging it it's not like reinventing the wheel or doing something completely different other than there are a couple of people I know that actually do not even have a website and I sort of go wow to me, it's like, well, you know, if you, you, you're creating all this content, then reuse it, re- repurpose it, redo this, redo that um, around the place with what you're doing. And and even if it's just juggling around with the website and with the whole PR and marketing, like you said, I think it's really good. Um, look, it's been really very, very interesting hearing all of the information that you've got. And as the listeners can certainly hear that you are an expert in this area. Um is there anything further you might want to add to that conversation? Yeah, I suppose um, like we're, we're more than happy to, to talk to anybody who comes to us. Like I think when, when we, we first talked, Sonia, I was talking about uh, looking, looking at rebranding kind of more that we just want to get out there and help people. Um, yeah. So we have like free audits on our website. We've got a Google Ads course. If you sign up to our newsletter, we've uh, we've loads of kind of courses coming this year that we're going to be um, we're going to hopefully be launching and making making as much of that free as possible. Obviously, we're we're trying to fill our, our own funnel as well, and we got to pay the bills somehow. But uh, we we really want to just help people as much as we can. So if people want to reach out to me on my LinkedIn or get in touch with me through the the website, and um, you know feel feel free or send me an email at Ronan at digitaltrawler.ie. Beautiful. Yep. That's digital trawler. Absolutely lovely. And I was going to be asking, is there anything on the horizon uh, for you this year that's going to be exciting other than the fact that you're buying a house, you're rebranding, you might have to end up employing more staff. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So um, I suppose actually uh, like besides all of that, probably the most exciting thing is uh, I'm I'm going to be getting married during the summer, hopefully Ah. at some stage. (laughs) So that's probably, that's probably the most exciting thing personally but um other than that I, I think in the business I, i'm most excited about the courses and kind of and um, getting to meet loads of people through that because we're going to make it free so that we can start oh, building wow. our network and growing it yeah oh well there you go people you have heard it so you're definitely going to have to chase that up um rowan's uh rowan walsh's details are going to be on the website where i house all the details so that's at sonyaclark.com forward slash episode. Look for Rowan Walsh. Uh, and is there any particular offer you did want to provide the listeners? Um, for, for me, I would say get on to our resource page and sign up for the free SEO audit. Um, I think that that would benefit anybody who's listened to all of this and um, would definitely be interested in that. And I go through those personally myself. So and um, you will you'll be getting my input into what I think you should be doing. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Don't we love those audits? I know sometimes they can be a bit, oh, do I really want to do it? It's just like doing the tax, but it's really good to do it. It's certainly very, very important for our business. And it sounds like you are certainly the typical entrepreneur, like the rest of us, got a lot on your plate. Um, wish you all the very, very best with all of that, including the wedding. <laughs> don't forget that one (laughs) and look thank you very very much for sharing all of your information with all of us today very very grateful and um, as you heard everyone that uh, you can reach out to him uh, to Rowan and um, Ronan sorry I keep saying Rowan Ronan and uh, grabbing his details and um, ask him and say help he's very very eager to help us all so thank you once again and we will say see you later Yeah, appreciate it, Sonia. Great being on. Okay, thank you. Bye.